Welcome back to the OPL. My name is Michael Hingis Hing, and I'm joined here at the analyst desk by Froskarina and Raz. We've just seen one of the most intense ends to a series in OPL history, but now we are moving things on to our second match of the evening, Dire Wolves versus Legacy. Frosco, talk me through these teams. They, 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 they are similar in their play style, would you say? Um, so they're both... How to explain this? Like, this I don't want to use the word. I don't want to use like blanket word like hyper aggressive. Sure, but the sure, beauty sure. about Dire Wolves and Legacy is that they carry from, or they have the potential to carry from all three positions, mm -hmm. which is very rare uh, for teams in the OPL. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Raz, what 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 are your thoughts on these teams? They're playing for that sweet belt right there. Yep. You excited? Uh, we, we thought the last set was like, ah, oh, you know, just take us on home. <laughs> that's that's the last one, and then you you go into the battle for first place, and you're like, what? Just kidding. Well, that oh, was just the, uh, the appetizer. We're <laughs> on to the main course now. Yeah, right. and exactly like Frost said, pretty much. Like, you got a team that can play off of any side. Yep. Nice, uh, nice title. I know. Here. I feel like Vanna whiting it. There like, you go. <laughs> get him with the, the mat, like the blue steel. That yeah, the versus one. a team that just, like, focuses on one <laughs> mindset. So that's going to be fun. To All right. Well, let us get to the lineups right now. Let's start off with the Dire Wolves. We have Chippies in the top lane, Sybil in the jungle, Fantix in mid lane, Raze as AD carry, and Regrets in support. They'll be facing off against currently the number one ranked team in the OPL. It is Legacy. For them, we have Tally in the top lane, Carbon in the jungle, Choo Choo's mid lane, King playing AD carry, and Kudan in support. Oh, so your analysis, what are you thinking? To re predictions? What are you. I mean, do, do you support this idea that Legacy are going to continue their, 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 their consistent run and, and finish on top? Or can't Dire Wolves 2-0 Legacy and take that to a secondary tiebreaker for first place in the OPL? The key word there is consistent. And I think it's undisputed that Legacy are the most consistent team right now in the OPL. Mm. Um, and... They even had roster issues. Of course, Tally injuring his hand wasn't able to join the team at the very beginning of the split, and yet they retained their kind of uh, first place position here. Mm. Dire Wolves have had moments of absolute brilliance. Um, their games against Chiefs, where you know they out macroed them really and moved around the map, but unfortunately, we haven't seen that established, consistent brilliance for me to give it to Dire Wolves here. Mm. Your yeah. thoughts, Raz? Do you agree? Pretty much, and as you saw on your screen, the Swift 2-0. Right? Yep. Uh, would pretty much tie it up, like, for... What? I just... It came up, and it went down. Oh, <laughs> okay. And went down. Good hand actions, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the Swift 2-0 uh, for Daryl's yeah. is pretty much bring them the first place. Uh, but, yeah, like, I think... Oh, this is going to be fun. So like, these guys, they're, they're going to be playing for first place. So let's like, yeah. take a look at the winner of that first place prize. Uh, prize, I say. Place, we're going in, uh, into the first seed. Uh, so we're going to see, it could be Dire Wolves or Legacy in that first seed. Uh, yeah. we, we don't know who the fourth seed is going to be because that's going to be decided tomorrow. And they'll be playing off against the second seed, which will be the loser of this match we're about to go to, and playing against the Chiefs. They're trying to avoid the Chiefs, Frosco. Yes, and but the really important thing is how Dire Wolves actually have to take first is they have to 2-0 Legacy here. Mm. And you are correct that the... Uh, whoever gets who ever loses this yeah. if, uh, if die rolls go down does have to face the chiefs and you yeah. know carbon was saying i he made the hashtag on the desk you know third or fifth don't come in <laughs> fourth and of course yeah. yes now they're in third but i don't think uh carbon was counting on the possibility that he might slide into second yeah mm. so raz what what are your thoughts you you, you, you think legacy are going to take this because of their consistency oh yeah like every time i talk about legacy it's mm. just like Negatives, but they are the most cons consistent team, and they're going up against Dire Wolves. That we exactly they can play through all points of the map, but sometimes, like, it comes down to what how do you want to play it, right? Sure, because last time we saw them, they played Jin mid, and it's like, okay, I know you can play anything, but that doesn't mean you should play anything, like, or everything. So, uh, so yeah. both of you are now on record for this to be a legacy win in this series. Yeah. Uh, obviously, they're playing for a spot in. The finals, uh, if they go through the semis, etc., and you can get tickets to the finals, which are held on August 13 in the Brisbane Piazza. If you're not in Brisbane, I might remind you, you can purchase tickets to various Hoyt cinemas in major cities all across Australia because we'll be simulcasting uh, the finals live through those. But that is enough from us at the analyst desk. Let us throw it over our casters to take us through game one. It's Rogie and Rusty. Thank you so much, Hingers. And after an incredible Series 1, I'm still so stoked for this one because this is a battle for first place and the OPL Legend title. Well, hey, we just got ourselves a three-way tiebreaker. <laughs> Let's just add a fourth one in the mix. You know, Direwolves, if they manage to get the 2-0 against Legacy here, will have that tiebreak for first place. It's important, again, because nobody really wants to play against the Chiefs. Yeah. And look, that actually sounds quite funny. Legacy, the number one team right now against the number two team of the Direwolves, fighting each other for first, yet the number three team is the scariest one to play against 
against in the semi-finals, <laughs> and so you want to at all costs avoid them. Yeah, it's a strange predicament both teams have themselves in, but it is very tall order to ask from Diables to 2-0 yeah. Legacy tonight. So well, it's, Yeah, it's not just a 2-0. <clears throat> if they actually want to finish first, it's effectively a 3-0. Oh, yeah, that's it. So it's actually even harder to do. You would expect Legacy to find one game in this series. The analysts all agree that Legacy would be considered the favorites coming into yep. this. But it's heavy-hitting players, heavy-hitting team organizations and names across the board. It could go either way. Look, I'm super stoked and excited for how this game can play out. Both these guys can have so many different win conditions and all their lanes stack up quite evenly in terms of like pound for pound power so mm -hmm. really it's hard to say where the advantages are going to come from either team yeah so the cool thing about this now that we're into champion selectors mm -hmm. chippies against tally could go either way again very big carries you look at the mid lane fantix and choo choos the exact same thing can be said for them and for raising king in the ad carry position regret and kuden of course they had the hot swap formerly of the opposite teams that they're on right now there's a lot of Good and bad blood, I would say, between both of these teams. Sure. Primarily, the mid lane. It's the sporadic feature for both of these teams. If Fantix goes off or if Choo Choo's goes off, it could be insanity. We'll see what they go with here. Game plank and Elise can be banned straight, uh, straight away in this draft phase here. Do you think these guys will be more tended to um, target ban or just think overall strong champions? I think rule of thumb because both of these teams have extensive champion pools. Yeah. You would say blue side target, red side meta bans. Makes the Malzahar sense. and the Vladimir do stand out as champions you probably don't want to give to anybody. So with Legacy, follow that trend here. Siva also being banned away on the side of Direwolves. 10 seconds left. What will Legacy go for? Will be the Aurelia though? Really giving props to Chippy's Aurelia and honestly, who wouldn't? Yeah, so they should, right? <coughs> yeah. Chippy's is a fantastic Aurelia player. They also get rid of the gangplank from Tally, so I guess even respects paid. Good to see Braun being banned away here. I'm a fan of that. He's such a strong champion, offers so much to a team in that support position. So Diables on board with that one, a top laner, an AD carry, and a support. So kind of just rounding out the bands here. Yeah, also taking Braun away from Kuden, one of the few oh, champions yeah. that's a tank that he actually likes to play, generally speaking. From there, we'll go towards something a little bit more passive with heals involved. We'll see which ones they highlight as there is uh, so many champions yeah. available. Both Vladimir oh. and Malzahar fall through the cracks here. Which one do they take? Diables over that Malzahar and end up locking it in here. You have to expect by being on red side, not banning Vladimir, they have some kind of strategy in place. Definitely. The thing with the Vladimir, it can lose games. We just saw it lose a game. But it's also a risk, right? Mm. So, like, maybe you have a counter available to that Vladimir. Maybe you've set yourself up with the team composition to beat it. But if he ends up 2-0 through laning phase from a mishap, suddenly he's still a Vladimir, and he's still a 2-0 Vladimir that you're supposed to counter, but he's just huge. I've seen a lot of Cassiopeias do quite well into that Vladimir matchup, so yep. maybe something that Legacy can look to later in the pick and ban phase, but Rek'Sai is available, Gragas is available, Elise was taken off the table, so wouldn't be surprised to see one of those two. There it is, the Gragas and the Nar actually. Something that Tally's been playing a fair bit of lately. It's a happy medium for a player like Tally between I'm a big carry and I'm also a tank. Split pushing and team fighting, Nar effectively does every single aspect of top laning. So not a shock to see Tally go towards it. He did also play this last week to pretty high degree of success. Carbon also with the Gragas. Has that hard engage, also doubles up with that disengage. Just a very malleable champion. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Diables answer. They've got a few carries available to them still. Uh, namely, the Jin, the Ash, the Lucian, Rek'Sai still up on the table. They'll probably go with that one since Gragas has taken off and they need to take it right away though. Maybe deny one of the more favorable supports, maybe the Bard. The Bard makes a lot of sense taking it away from Kuden. He's actually quite a big playmaker when he does get that champion. And with Karma gone, with Braum gone, unless they really want to go something defensive, you'd expect the Bard. There it is. Bard comes through, but also that Echo gets locked in here, so can't say I saw that one. Interesting. Hmm. And it's an Echo picked into a Nar. Yeah. The huh. funny thing about the matchup into Nar is like Aurelia does well into it, right? As an example, yes, it's banned. But the reason it does well is you can burst him out and get the heck out before he turns Mega. You can exploit him in mini form. Echo kind of does that. The rule of thumb here is like Echo places a parallel convergence down. It's like you've got three seconds, better run away. And Nar will probably run away during that time. Does trade well 
has a fair bit of sustain when you go Grasp of the Undying, if that's your build. Or if you go further, has a lot of damage. Ultimately, not the best. Let's see how he can make it shine. We know Chippies is, when he's on our peak, he's doing great. But we actually see a Tarot coming out here from Kuden. Sort of a few times in the OCS, but didn't think got set in the OPL. Yeah, it started to creep up. Of course, the Hellions did play this one yesterday. Didn't ah. find a victory with it, but they definitely still looked towards it. I guess one of the cool things about this is that Kuden shows Braum's not his only tanky champion that cool. he can effectively play now. Of course, needs to prove that as fact. Going towards this, quite good into Echo. Vladimir, the exact same thing, and perhaps this is the real strategy. Play low-range carries, even though Vladimir is meant to counter them. Use the Tarek ultimate if Vladimir uses his direct it's counter. It's going to be very scary if a uh, invulnerable Gnar in mega form just comes into the back of your tower, gets a massive Gnar into the wall and just starts cleaning up. Direwolves here, they hover the Ezreal, they're hovering the Jin right now, so showing what they can play. Seen Jin do a great deal for them, but of course that's not that's what he's usually in the mid lane, so... Sure, Raze can still play it. Mm -hmm. Rounding out with the jungler as well. There you go. No surprise to see the Rex side. Grog has taken Elise Band away. Nidalee not in great shape right now. And Rex side being picked up for Sybil. Raze got himself the Jin. Yeah, so a lot of respect shown to Sybil with that Elise Band. But the natural next best thing you would expect was going to be locked in and is Sybil playing Rek'Sai, able to be a playmaker, able to get across the map and work with his team quite effectively. I guess we need to cement the fact that Fantix is playing the Vladimir, not the Echo. Yeah. Could go either way, but because there's a Nartop playing, you would expect Vladimir. Not to mention, he does have that Ghost for the time being, so we'll be running that on the Vladimir. Yeah, I think my immediate expectation here would be the Azir potentially to round sure. the compositions out. Twisted Fate again, good for getting around the map and ganking other lanes, but not that great in lane. Victor, a happy medium between the two. There's an abundance of champions Legacy could pick here that would mold nicely into their team composition, but Cassiopeia might be what they're looking for. Yeah, also seen as one of the counters to Vladimir by a lot of Oceanic players. There it is. Has, yeah, has even been played in the NALCS as an example, as a counter to Vladimir. Does do a lot of damage. The single target threat is quite legit out of him. You're missing a fair bit of added, perhaps, utility or crowd control. It's mostly ultimate reliant. Sure. But the cool thing about it is that King's a short-range Lucian. Frostgrown mentioned on the desk even that it complements a Vayne. Well, Lucian's similar range to that of a Vayne. You sit there and peel for King. It's revolving right now around keeping King alive. It's going to be very difficult for anyone from Direwolf to really break that front line, get into the back and start wreaking havoc. I just imagine Echo Phase diving in straight into that ultimate. It's turned to Stone Sybil. Going to, going to be met with the same issues here. And Fantix with the Ghost and, uh, Ghost and Flash does have a lot of maneuverability, but... So does Cassiope hit one of those cues and basically got a ghost yourself? Yeah, to me, it's more about the Echo and what his place actually is within the draft from yeah. the Direwolves. They have this really cool composition that isn't often seen or even spoken about. It's the Bard setup that can follow up with either an Echo stun or a Vladimir damage okay, to be laid yep. down afterwards. It does feel like it comes a lot down to what Regret's able to do on that Bard. But past that point, I really do feel like if he goes into the back line, then Chippies is just yeah. dead. Well, there's a lot of cool things they can pull off. Like you said, they can chuck down their ultimate, mm -hmm. stack it on top with that parallel convergence. But that takes a lot of uh, premeditation yeah. and basically on point to pull off. So still a few question marks surrounding this Echo pick, but let's see if Chippies can make it work. Absolutely. Strong individual players. Execution's always going to be the important oh, yeah. factor, not only from the draft, but from them trying to beat Legacy and take them apart. So it will be really important for them to not just pick the champions they have, but round it out really effectively. Look, I think importance is the word tonight, and this game could be more important for the Diewolves. They really want to get that uh, massive first place spot, that OPL Legend title, go up 2-0. to zero. Essentially three to zero because they will force it into a tiebreaker. But we are into game number one of the series. Going to be an epic one tonight, Rusty. Yeah, this is the battle for first place between Legacy and Direwolves. Direwolves trying to avoid the Chiefs. If they can 2-0 Legacy here. And they will have to 3-0 to actually avoid them. Skirting around the edges of that barrel to ensure no one takes some early damage. Direwolves brute force their way in to get down some nice deep wards. Want to get as much vision as possible. Didn't actually see any of this in the first series. Everyone just kind of fanning out here. So, Doubles and Legacy, they know what they want to do. Premeditated their strategies, mm -hmm. and they're going to be executing them. Yeah, Sybil course. hasn't bought yet. No, Sybil's just a creative thinker. You know? No, I don't, Rusty. 
No, he's not going to go back to base, is he? I wonder if he'll notice. This Look, could there's, be. there's... No, okay. He doesn't get bonus experience if he clears a camp without this. You need to calm down, Sybil. There couldn't be a more important game where you forget to buy your bloody item, Sybil. <laughs> this is for first spot. You need to 2-0 Legacy and you don't buy a single... Oh, no potions, no. no extra jungle experience. What are you doing, mate? I wonder if he's about to notice. <laughs> he's, gonna, uh, he's pressing his bloody hotkey to chuck on the potion thinking, Oh, damn. What have you done? Go back to base. You're, there's no way you're clearing another camp. You're no, dreaming. Literally, he's pressing his potion button. He's realized that it's not working right now. You go for that gromp, you die. <laughs> you, sir, are a tragedy to esports right now. This is right heartbreaking now. stuff, Rusty. Kuden takes a good chunk of damage, but un <laughs> unlike Sybil, he bought items. He's going to sustain back up. He's fine. They would have noticed too because he went over a ward. All they needed to do is press tab and think, hey, someone's got no items. I want to see if Carbon makes use of this. Oh, welcome back to League of Legends. <laughs> We're currently watching one. We're currently watching the, the battle for the number one spot, Rusty. I'm actually just pissed off now. That's great. Yeah. I'm tilted. All right. Chew's doing a good job of pulling out Fantix early, making use of that very low cooldown on the Twin Fang. But Fantix, a mannerless and sustained base champion, should have no issue getting himself back up. Oh, on the queue. She's just using the minion. And incredibly, Carbon has a level advantage over Sybil. <laughs> has an advantage in the way of creeps over Sybil. Could actually get a recall and have an efficient purchase soon. And may be able to get a gank off within the first six minutes of play. This is very detrimental to the early game of Sybil right now. And it's going to be hard for him to recover. Carbon not doing a great deal to exploit that, but he doesn't really need to because Sybil's already got himself behind, so he can just focus on other things. I'm also pretty sure nobody was really hyper aware of the fact that he had no item. Well, he walked over what's so all they need to do is press tab, but I guess emo uh, emotions are high and they want to have that hyper focus on everything else, I guess. Yeah, also, Raise and Regret now <coughs> in this bottom lane. They have a lot of damage that they can put down Kuden on a very non impactful no. champion in Tarot. Kind of just sits down. Has a great time. You know, just hangs out. Play some hopscotch and stuff. Very abysmal heal at that, so any of the damage should be sticking for quite some time. But I guess Bard's heal, not so good either. Unless, of course, it is left to charge up. Yeah, and the Relic Shield, of course, will help out a bit. Oh, so he'll have an added amount of sustain. And once again, Kuden's just going to be more of a damage soak and tank. And we have to actually highlight the opposite side of the Rift as it's being shown to us right now. This is a cool matchup because you would expect Nar to do well in it when he's mini. Chippies had chunked him down quite a bit, but he has used all three stacks of his potion while uh, Tally popped his own. Still has the health advantage, but uh, while Tally's in mini, can get that range bonus out, but all the, bit, all the while closer to Mega. Tops the passive, can't pop the hyper of his own though. So yeah. good trades from Chippy. Tally actually misplays a little bit, but it was a non-influential amount of damage because Tally's going to go back to base and yeah, reset. Uh, having the three potions used to the one in that particular matchup is good because it's also damage missing from Chippies by mm -hmm. having the corruption stack. So he can continue to hang out. Should not really be at a threat of dying. And hasn't gone back just yet. So I'm not going to land from regret, but you see all the lanes are quite even right now. Ignore the jungle for a little bit. Truly is. And hey, Sybil's not that far behind for what it's worth. About to clear his blue buff. About five and a half minutes, maybe six. So I guess he's alright. It's just embarrassing, really, like above all else. And look, like it is only two CS. His yeah. experience will catch up. Rek'Sai is also a reasonably efficient clearer. And Carbon hasn't been hard farming the entire time. He's been putting some resources towards maybe looking for ganks or getting some vision down, setting up the map as best he can. He'll be fine. No, Sybil was just playing hard. So I'm not going to land coming out of Kuda. Regret gets it though. Deal comes through. But these guys just trying to lane efficiently. Fantix might be in trouble. Nice flash from Carbon. There's the pull. Don't have it ignite to finish him off though. So Fantix gets the safety. No summoner spells burnt. Yeah, it does well to not even burn a single summoner spell in that respect. Might be pushed out of this lane if Choose can be hyper aggressive. And Carbon surprisingly hits the Flash Body Slam instead of just having the pull 
used by Fantix, who yeah. lost a lot of his health bar instead of predicting it. Well, Rek'Sai is off at the Raptors. He's level 5 now, so has caught back up in terms of level. Carbon will be hitting that level 6, though. Right ahead, Fantix really taking some pressure here. Sybil going in. What's the flash? Actually, nice. Ulti onto Regret. He might be in trouble. There's a flash. Carbon doesn't have his available. Not going to matter. Headbutt for first blood. We saw a teleport coming through. Did get cancelled. Sybil now might be in trouble. Fantix stays alive. Shoes being level 6 is able to pick on Regret. Comes into the lane. Tries to have an influence, but only has a negative influence. So really unfortunate for Direwolves. And ultimately, that Rek'Sai, he came in, tried to get something done, but trying is not going to be enough at this point in the game. Because that's not just a Cassiopeia that's got the assist and has a reasonable amount of lane control. It's Choo Choo's on Cassiopeia, who has been going insane on that champion. That's a great point. Was Tally's teleport being used here, but he's just going to get cleaned up. Chippies and Sybil get the nice dive. So Sybil straight from mid down to bot. Chippy's going to be feeling good about that one. Yeah, it's actually pretty big. So they get the kill. May not be a solo kill, but Chippy has so much momentum off the back of this. Sybil able to uh, look for further invades past that point. But really, again, mini Nar form. The damage that uh, you can actually get out of an Echo. Sybil was really just there for moral assistance to make him feel happy about it. Quite substantial here. And Tally used that teleport in mid earlier on, so won't have that available to get back to lane in time. So... Going to be falling behind in CS to start things off. Chippies did pick up that Dark Seal, so they're going to be start stacking that one up with the kill. Yeah, and it may well be an AP or, you know, damage-based Echo. Mm -hmm. It is Chippies after all. The AP Bruiser coming in full force here. Does have that Sheen. So that kind of says what he wants to go for here. Yeah, it should be a nice one goal, though, yeah, right? One or two so ways. Most likely have that because he's got a Cloth Armor with it for doing our detective work. Can Vladimir pull on Cassiopeia's Miasma? Because I know you can't use any, like, movement... Well, uh, it's not a movement spell, yeah. so you'd expect so, yeah. yeah. Just making sure. No, there's no, uh, no magical journeys allowed to be taken. Oh, really? You put it at the entrance. Very interesting stuff here. Great little addition to her kit. Giving her some more viabilities here, but... Raze and Regret doing a good job. I'm actually falling behind by about 10 CS or so. So props to King and Kuden. Using that low range to really bully them up in the brawling style fights. Yeah, absolutely. King's one of the big win conditions that Legacy have been putting a lot of their emphasis towards as of late. He has been stepping up to the plate and being this massive carry for the team. As these two. Chippy's really looking for it here. Actually uses the ultimate to try and connect with some damage. Not going to follow it up though. So having his reservations about that one. Sybil clears out two wards. He's going to find one of his own, though. Yeah, and so Tally and Chippy's hitting each other is not that big of a deal because neither of them die, except mm. that the immediate lane swap was put into effect where Tally's now working with King and Carb is now working with Kuden to try and control most of Summoner's Rift. And it is working out for them, but there will be trades now of turrets. Yep, Carbon smites that red buff away, so... Legacy do instigate the lane swap. Tally's still here, so he will be a beneficiary of that localized gold if they choose to give it over to him. Yeah, and they're looking to overpush this one, actually. So by having four people here, Carbon's speeding up that process. Interestingly enough, because they are still trading. See so where they choose, where the Legacy choose to go uh, to now. Tally's still quite low, and we've seen Chippies does have the uh, damage output to really take it to him, should he choose the but Legacy, culminating in the mid lane. Do they want to go for a play? Rift Herald has been started by Direwolves, and Legacy must know. Yeah, they're actually getting collapsed on, though, by Direwolves. This movement is pretty ballsy from Legacy. Oh, look at Fantix, so he's right in the fight. Curtain Core has been used on top of three Legacy members. Damage is coming through Carbon. Great ulti to keep them safe. Tempered Fate comes through. Can he land a stun off it? Not going to happen. Everyone gets out. It was close. Legacy were getting completely collapsed upon. Yeah. Rift Herald does still go down. The five men strong unit is not able to do enough damage to actually take apart Legacy. And that was without Kuden being level six. So the invulnerability was still missing. This goes to show. That was the right move from the Direwolves, honestly. They recognized that Tally had no help. Overstayed his welcome in that bottom lane to try and push it through. Has to go back to base if he wants to teleport in and be an influential factor. Doesn't work like that. Ooh, Tally's going to be feeling good about this one. Gets himself that red buff carbon, donating that one across. So it's going to be a very hard lane. Actually like giving whoever. Tally everything. Yeah, they really want to make sure this NAR stays relevant throughout the game. And 
It's going to be doing just that. King up in the top as well. So once again, Legacy going to be the first ones to make the play for the tower. How long before Diawals uh, recognize this and go for the bot lane tower themselves? Yeah, they were making the play very early <coughs> here from the side of Legacy. Diawals, instead of actually making a trade, are looking to defend this. Now, they're on a ward, so they know that Diawals are here. No tempered fade available. Chippies has his own ulti. Zippy just sitting off in the tri, but we mentioned he gets spotted out by the ward. Can Diawals defend? That is a question. Feels like they actually want to. That Once again, they're sending rays up here. They're making a lot of efforts towards this. The Bard ulti is not available. The Jin ulti is not available. Nor is the Vladimir if he were to be joining any fights. This is a good opportunity for Legacy to perhaps continue this avenue of attack. But they don't want to. They might go for it. Kudin might be in trouble. Does pop down the ultimate. Makes this a little bit of a while to channel here. So Chippy's actually not doing any damage. It is a 3v4 in favor of Direwolves. Rage just flashes in with that fourth shot. Cleans up Kuda. Dragus is here though. They're making their way through Legacy. They want to answer Carbon. He could get the godlike ulti delivers two members straight in their face. But King, he doesn't want to borrow. Chippy's kills him anyway with ultimate still available. Got to question that one. Rage gets stunned up. Choose with the help of Tally. Picks that one up. Yeah, Chippy gets a little bit kill hungry there. It feels like doesn't use his ulti to get out alive even after the keg was used to knock two people back so that's a big win from carbon in particular and good movements from legacy to able to be able to collapse after a fight that started off a little bit poorly from them direwolves they had the plan they wanted to defend it we already said the ultimates weren't available yet they still looked for these fights then they get caught out good stuff from legacy here we have themselves about a thousand gold lead here, more like 800 at this stage. One tower piece for both teams, so Legacy's top lane focus didn't result in a tower of their own. It is the Air Dragon, so Cloud Dragon, so no one really putting any priority on that. Tally gets bought just in time to get himself a nice juicy minion wave. Yeah, Tally's going to be super happy about this one. Frozen Mallet already as well. The elated yelling Nargai. <laughs> <laughs> All of the minions. Yeah, and he's gone for that Frozen Mallet build, which is uh, very much a controlling in a split push build. These two. He might be in trouble, but there is Carbon. Chippy's really needs to use the ultimate soon. Gonna wait for it to be back in range, but Carbon doing a great job of playing he Bodyguard, the dude. There, it's a culling. Good flash out of Chippy's to keep himself safe. Chippy's already up there as well. And here's a minion wave that he prepared earlier. Apparently, Chippy's has the perfect minion wave timing to make sure that King's Culling does not take him down. Oh yeah. Legacy will still make the plays though because I don't know if they expected Chippies to be there, but Carbon was there at the perfect time to stop any kind of solo kills from happening. In fact, pushes them out to the point where the turret will eventually go down. Yeah, he's looking like he can't make up his mind whether he wants to go in or out onto Chippies there, but Diables do answer with a tower in the bot lane for themselves here, so do tie that turret count up at Diables. Might be going for the dragon. Yeah, and again, this is actually giving an opportunity for Legacy if they want to fight for it. They shouldn't realistically be able to fight given that two of them are in base. Three of them, sorry, are even in base. The Gragas was actually uh, hiding underneath Lucian's icon. Just a threat from the Cassiopeia and the Nart is actually enough to deter the Diabolds for now. Chippies doesn't have his ultimate available or the flash. Ult's going to be up very soon though. Don't have teleport though to get into the fight mm -hmm. if it comes to it. These two are actually hitting each other a lot, but nothing actually comes from it every single time. No, Fantix just more focused on getting those minions while not really worried about the damage, as he knows it won't stick for too long. Has a completed Spirit Visage, where Chu's sitting on that Abyssal Scepter and the tier for now. Carbon making his way through. Let's get spotted out by the Tremor Sensors. Good wards as well coming out. He's going to place another ward in about two seconds. Yeah, there we go. And he'll place the third one if this one dies. I'm ready. <laughs> Come on, Carbon. Do you have one? He doesn't. Uh, doesn't look like it. He's just going to place himself there. He is a he? ward now. Yep. He's just going to place himself there. this bush. This is mine. <laughs> Kuden comes in. Gets it definitely not ward down. Regret. Can't land the stun. Yeah, so they are putting out most of their efforts towards controlling the dragon. Hit area. Kind of the chillin' smite and here Echo off in the back line, but Chippy's is pretty damn squishy. Uses his ultimate bard. It's only carbon. Chippy just gets taken down and he's not as tanky as he likes to think right now. Not at all. So Chippy's dies once again. We already challenged this Echo as a pick in the team. He may be a tank, but Tally 
is still able to do the exact same thing whilst being that meta pick of the Nah. The rest of Legacy, however, collapsing super efficiently. Only armor to be seen from the Echo, but the magic damage that comes out of Chu is even having that Abyssal Scepter to reduce nearby, putting in work. Chu still has the ultimate available. Tarek Stun not going to land. Vantix is able to just pull himself to safety for now. Low on mana, though, is the Cassiopeia, but she does have the tier. See if Diabolus can hold this mid lane tower. They should be able to. Everyone's just kind of backing off here, but Legacy yeah. get themselves a kill, get themselves a dragon, and retain that map control. Absolutely, and even retain that gold lead that they've acquired for themselves. So Legacy looking pretty good at 16 minutes into this first game of our second best of three series. The Legends title also on the line. This is a very big one here. Both teams doing this for the sake of first spot. Legacy have that in the bag already. Direwolves are the ones trying to claim it here. Chippies gets himself that blue buff here. Like he said, it's an OPL legend fight. Look at that belt. I'm looking at it from here, Rusty. It looks damn fine. It did suit Carbon quite well on the stage, I will say. Could do with the wiping if you get Chippies might be in trouble here. We've seen how squishy he is when King can lock him down. That doesn't really have the burst mm -hmm. to kill anyone just yet. It's all about getting maybe two or three bursts down. We saw that happen to Tally, but since then, currently sitting on one and two in terms of kills and death. Now, just kind of left to defend this top lane tower and I don't know how well of a job he can do. Timewinder hits a few minions. He does a quite good job. Uh, yeah. Echo's actually uniquely powerful at stopping people from pushing waves and throw out that Timewinder. If you have any kind of cooldown reduction, which he has the 20% from the Iceborne Gauntlet, then you can actually just throw out a second one before the passive ends. You get three stacks on those minions, and usually they're all dead by that point. So Chippy is able to hold on for a substantial amount of time. And you can continue to throw those stacks out. He's trying to defend this as best he can. These guys once again just trading blows, but should be favoring Fantix here. Does have that sustain available to him. Maybe going into the Q and choose. Not going to land, but Carbon is off to the wing, so we've seen that they have the potential to really make Fantic's life in danger here. Now, people starting to congregate around this middle lane area. Mm. Fantix and choose. It doesn't exactly go in one direction or the other. You look at the Crimson Rush bar and then Vladimir's Rage bar. And then basically decide when you can all win or lose trades. So comes through onto Fantix, just heals it up. Not They're just covering trouble. the lane. Yeah, Choose goes over to get himself his blue. They really don't want that mid lane tower going down. Tally in the bot, going to be pushing that one. Of course, Mirrored is Chippies in the top. And everything slows down on mm. Summoner's Rift once again. Ray's sitting mid lane again. Jin, one of those uniquely powerful champions. And hanging out and actually locking people down if the mid laner applies any ticks of damage. And Choose actually showing a fair amount of caution right now. Perhaps expecting somebody to be nearby. Well, Legacy, they have the advantage right now in terms of gold. Here comes the ultimate out of Raze. Misses the first shot. Cancels it for that ex uh, reduced cooldown here. Now Fantix is going to get his health back. Tried to make a play onto choose. Not going to happen. But Dival is poised quite aggressive in this topside jungle. Just going to get some nice wards down. Dewater for you. spawning in about 10 as well. So... Could be the objective legacy you're looking to force, because when you have a Cassiopeia, that thing melts. Yeah, so we've actually got 20 minutes into this game, effectively, and nothing substantial has really been gained by either team. I think the end result at the moment is a 1,000 gold lead. Yeah, we just have a slight pause here, so we'll try to get you guys back in the game as soon as possible. But Baron did just spawn, and the third of Cassiopeia will always be there, and it's so hard mm -hmm. to get into the pit when she's kind of standing guard. That petrifying gaze, not the thing you want to be work walking headfirst into. Yeah, not only that, the Cassiopeia, when she actually does the Baron, is incredibly quick. So something that we saw banned away in the entire first series mm -hmm. is that Cassiopeia, oh, something yeah. that has a lot of threat to neutrals, and Tainted Minds actually exploited that as a really good win condition for these teams coming into this first game. It is present for Legacy. Not only that, they've got the Lucian with it, so they're able to have him stand behind the Cassiopeia in any kind of skirmish or fight that takes place and use him as a pivot point for damage to be put out onto the teams. It's not just Lucian either, it's King. Yeah, Legacy have a lot of good controlling aspects in every single one of their lanes. Take a look up at Tally in the top as well on that Nah. Kind of getting mm -hmm. bullied out a little bit early, but really finding his footing towards this mid-game. So 
Really want to see some of the combos that he can pull out when he gets into the fight. Chucks down the nub, but you did mention it is King's Lucian as well. So he did a great job of kind of denying Chippies that flank earlier on in those team fights. Yeah, and speaking of the Lucian, it's actually something that they've started to hide away now. Legacy yeah. have said that Nah doesn't want to 1v1 the Echo as such. They want to actually put him in the side lanes. They gave him a red buff and a Krug while they're <laughs> on their way through. Yeah. They're actually making active attempts to avoid the 1v1 between Chippies and Tally play the map, actually put King against him, and then they even had skirmishes where they were putting Choose as the member of the team killing him throughout it. And so Legacy's strategy right now is not so much about winning the 1v1 or outscaling the 1v1 in that top lane. Mm. It's more about pulling direwolves around the map to where they want to be. Well, that's why the game has been so slow, essentially, is there's not much they could really pull direwolves to. Most of the outer turrets have gone down. It was only mm -hmm. a Cloud Drake early on, and they kind of just gave that one away. But now that the Baron has spawned, it is an objective that mm -hmm. direwolves have to take seriously here because we've kind of been harping on about how well Cassiopeia does it, but we've got to stress this. Once she gets those poisons down, the Twin Fang damage amplification is no laughing matter. Yeah, it may only be 20 minutes into this game, but when you think about it, it's still always going to be a persistent threat that yeah. the Direwolves will have to look towards and actually want to address. It right, looks like we are back into the game. Everyone just resetting their clients here to make sure that all the problems cease and desist here. But Legacy grouping S3 in the mid. Mid lane tower for Direwolves is still quite healthy. See if they can do anything about that. Choose is going to back off, but I'm excited to see this Tarek be utilized efficiently. I've only really seen him chuck out a few stunts here and there, but that ultimate is so game changing. I'm, I said it on the OCS when they picked it. Uh, I'm surprised we don't see it more often. Yeah, it's definitely quite game changing, but it still has like a three second yeah, window essentially of actually doing it. I do think the Bard, if your goal is to dive, is the better champion, and Jana, if your goal is to disengage, is also the better champion. Yeah, the Ghostblade being popped. Ray's actually really going to take from 100 to 0 there just by the Cullen King on point tonight. Yeah, he definitely has also hits that level 11 mark, so a lot more bullets to be seen from the Culling. Now Legacy's 2v2 showing their hand and their skill. They're able to find the Jin unawares. Of course, had both summoners. Didn't need to blow anything, just goes back to base. And everything will settle one more time. Ooh, can Legacy get anything off forcing? The Jin to recall. Looks like they got their sight set yeah. onto mid once again. King Kuden are there, helping out your boy choose. In the back there is Carbon threatening the dive. Fantix is hit by the stun. Sybil coming around to the side here. I'm gonna get snared up, but there's a heal from Taran. Yeah, so they're not Carbon up, and Sybil definitely knew they weren't gonna win that. He was just using the spell that was available to him yeah. within the immediate vicinity. Legacy did make an active attempt, perhaps, towards the turret, but instead of hitting that turret, they just hit the Vladimir as Arkudan. Got a long way to walk, buddy. Checks, chucks out the Tempered Fate. Kudan might be in trouble. There's the ultimate keeping him safe for now. Doesn't hit any of his teammates. Choose and tally in the back of that one. Fantic, three members on top of him. Raves just gets slammed into the wall by the Nah. The CC is well and truly there. He goes down to Carbon, but now Choose might fall. Still alive somehow in the back though. Two massive kills coming out from Direwolves. King, he's still alive using the culling to great effect. Chippies doesn't have the ultimate. He goes down, but in return, Carbon falls. So a two for three favoring the Direwolves. Actually a really big win for the Direwolves there. King was doing his absolute best, as was Choo Choo's, to try and round these fights out. But the Echo's two lives were essentially enough to keep him within it. And Raze, he died to Tally. Tally did his part, but his part wasn't enough as it's now Fantic's turn to run away. Regret making his presence known. Sybil's also there. They want Choo to can kill all of them. Yeah. That's the thing they need to consider here is that Cassiopeia has a lot of threat as long as they're all low in health bars. Everything does basically settle it even. And the only reason that went so well for Direwolves is because of Kuden being focused out, forced to ult just himself at the start of that fight. So could you imagine if just two or more members had that on available to them? But look at Choose just really damaging Fantix right now and the combination of the Rylai slow and his uh, Q giving him that movement speed. There's not a lot that Vlad can do to trade with him. He's quite a durable snake lady. Mm -hmm. He walks around someone as Rift able to deal with the Vladimir as best he can. Definitely still putting in work in that 1v1 even though it's a spirit visage completed. Both of them will be working towards the Rylai's Crystal Scepters. Now big item breaking points starting to be seen by both of these teams. The last fight was super close. Came down to execution. The fact that Direwolves kicked it off properly this time around. I don't know if they actually want to outright contest this one just yet. Tally's got that Mega Nah. Sybil holds himself back in, but Carbon does secure it. There's an ulti from Tally. Can he get in time? No. Chooses to cancel it. 
Curtain call cancelled as well after two shots. So does get a bit of a refunded cooldown here, but Legacy beat Diewolves to the punch, get the dragon and get out. Yes, the Diewolves have the inside track. Ooh, they might be able to get the stun here onto Carbon. Chippies does land it, but King getting good auto attacks down Carbon. He is quite tanky. Now Kuden might be the next point of contention here. Choose over the wall, getting a lot of damage onto Chippy. Can he force the ultimate? But oh, not going to hit. Choose doing a great job of saving that ultimate. Yeah, also has the Rylize applied, so all of those members of Direwolves chasing Legacy don't get what they came for. Legacy on the opposite side now in this middle lane, looking to hold the fort. And nothing is yet to break. It's Mandic. still really close. Yes, it still has a Hemo Plague available. Narge, Mega Nar just popped for Tally, so we can see that bar depleting quite quickly if he doesn't get back into combat soon. Jumps out the stairs, smacks Fantic in the face with it. Once again, and so these teams really want to get these mid lane out. It's the last outer turrets left on the map. Welcome to the Oceanic Era. <laughs> Neither team actually really understanding a breaking point besides this middle lane turret, firstly. Yeah. They've got the Cassiopeia into the Vladimir. So on the side of Legacy, you would expect the exploiting of that 1v1 matchup to be seen. However, they've put so many resources towards this middle lane. It's really hard to find a side lane for the Lucian to just consistently get his solo lane farm but they're prioritizing that. And Legacy actually across the board, except for Jungle, are actually finding a CS advantage. So doing well, grabbing these slow advantages throughout the game, rounding themselves out towards these items at decent paces. The opposite on the Direwolves is not to be said. The Direwolves is really trying to find their groove in this game right now because so far they've been dancing to the beat of Legacy's drums and not really finding anything for it. Carbon just trying to deter Fantic from taking that ward, but he might be in trouble now. Forced to pull the flash, comes in, good stun. Choose misses the ulti, Fantix pops the ghost, puts the Hemo Plague down, there's the Tarak ulti just in time. Blocks out the damage, might not be over yet, there's a curtain call, Tally coming through, the Naba nearly got full, he might be able to do something with it, Sybil, the, uh, very, very low, here comes Tally, it no. misses the ulti, heartbreaking to say the least, Chippy's round to the side of this one, has the ulti if he needs to get out of there, might just be walking his way out, King quite low. But Choose has caught him, Chippies, he's forced to ult, it's now or never, a beautiful ulti coming through from Bard, can race, start to pump out the damage, Carbon over the wall, can't hit anyone, forced to flash back, Fantix still up, here this comes is wild. Simple, gets the knock up on, Fantix flashes in, huge kills, damage coming down, race, he has to reload, doesn't matter, gets the kill, Natali forced to run, stun comes through onto Kuden. There is regret with the slow Fantix coming round to be cleared up. One last shot. Raze picks up the double. The Direwolves get four members of Legacy down right on time to work towards this Baron pit. That was the longest and most protracted <laughs> fight that I have seen. That took such a long time to hit any kind of breaking point. And that's because there are just tanks running at each other, bruisers just hitting each other in the face until somebody dies. And it just so happens that Tally doesn't hit the Nara in a single member, and Fantix hit his ultimate on the four. It's heartbreaking to say the least, but Direwolves, after a beautiful team fight, four for zero, get themselves the Baron on the back of that one. Legacy, they wanted the fight, they forced it time and time again, but as you can see, it didn't work out for them. Yeah, note at this point that the Nara ultimate's already been used, they're able to find this fight. Fantix in the back line is doing a lot of work. Kuden, of course, not able to help his AD carry, raise has been hitting a lot of Ws. That's the most important part for this Direwolves AD carry. He's trying to be that utility-based AD. He is utilizing that to a great degree of success. And Fantix is starting to pop off on this middle lane. Choose missed his ultimate. Tally missed his ultimate. Carbon's ultimate was used to knock them sideways. Missed execution pretty much across the board from Legacy. Not what they want to have happen, but the Direwolves pick up on it and they capitalize. One of the most important games, Naya, the most important game. This is for first spot. They need to 2-0 Legacy and then win the tiebreakers if they want that number one and they're going to do just that. Look how well they're playing in game number one. It took them some time to find their footing, but after that team fight, you can really see the strength that this Direwolf squad has. It's like... Out goes Sybil, back comes in Sybil. Out goes Chippies, there's Chippies again. Fantix from nowhere flashes on in, but now Legacy forced to play defensive. Starting to do less and less damage to Fantix. His poor Choose. Yeah, Choose will be all right once he gets his Void Staff, yeah. but uh, interesting item decisions from him as well. Not even going for the Seraph's Brace <coughs> brace just yet. Mm -hmm. Wanted the Rylize as soon as possible, now puts him on the back burner in terms of strength. Needs that Void Staff before he's even relevant again.
Ooh, looks like Direwolves will be the first to break the mid lane. Get themselves that mid lane outer. Thanks to the Baron buff, Chippy's up in the top doing work with the accompaniment of an empowered Siege minion. Tally doing what he can to defend that, but where can Legacy really go from here? So we've actually seen a fair bit of merit in Legacy's drafting phase. The Tarek is a counter to the Vladimir. Makes sense, right? But the same problem applies. He's still a Vladimir. Yeah, you maybe counted his ultimate. He's still a Vladimir. That rule applies throughout this game. Right now, they just need King to go huge. They need the Nar ultimate to actually connect and the Cassiopeia to work around King. They just need to start playing towards better strategies. Dragon Call being used, bot lane in it does fall in favor of Direwolves. They're really making the power play off this Baron buff, getting themselves 5,000 gold in the lead at 30 minutes in the game. Nine kills to six, Direwolves leading the scoreline. Now yeah, Direwolves, game number one, stirring for a potential upset. They do need to win this 3-0, including tiebreakers, but this is the first step in that direction. They've got Legacy on the back foot. Top lane inner goes down as well, so that's three towers that Direwolves have secured off that uh, team fight, and then the Baron play. Really looking to try and get this mid lane inner. Chippy's just hanging around that red buff. Should be taken away, no problem. Tally forced to stay up in that top lane and kill the minions. Dragon is alive, but it's still that Mountain Drake. Looks like Civil should be picking that one up any time now. And Chippy's actually even altered towards that lane, which is why we were looking at him before. Yeah. Gets himself into the fight. He's now going to be grouped with the team and saves the teleport by doing so. Once again, Legacy need to work around that Mega Nar timing. Whenever he's mini, he's a split pusher. If he's Mega, he's meant to be hitting Rays. And that really is the big deal. Lock down Rays, stop him from helping the team, and then they're effectively just four bruises. Stun. There's the Bard ulti onto two members. It should just be a free tower here. Jedi Wolves want to fight. Doesn't look like it, but Tally might have other ideas. Getting the slow. Here comes Carbon. Stun down onto Fandix. A lot of damage. He turns around with the Hema plays. Tally does get the ulti onto two members, followed by the Wallet. Can they get anything more? Tarek ulti is down. Chippy's in the back line, trying to pick someone up, but Dyle's he doesn't have the ultimate. This. Look at the curtain call coming out. The damage just exploding. Fandix jumps in Look the back. Fandix. Gets a massive amount of damage down. He's still going. He's still alive. He gets taken down. Kuden, he's behind the enemy lines right now. Chippy's doing what he can in flashes. Rays gets the dancing grenade. One more onto King. A triple kill for Ray. Yeah, Jin gets a triple and the Direwolves now break the base of Legacy. Kelly did hit the ultimate, but it wasn't onto the priority targets. Fantix just went ballistic in that yeah. last fight. He spent so much of his time on a flank or in the back line. King is trying his absolute hardest to keep them in this. Kuden's ultimate was still good, but his ultimate missed Tally. And then Chippy's just started killing Tally. That was immediately the decision that they started to make. You want to put that Nara into the back line <laughs> and have barely one and a half resistance items? Then we just kill him first. Just got a lot of health on top of that slow just from the uh, frozen mallet. So like you said, doesn't really have the survivability. Sure, he's got a lot of base stats when he's in that mega, but without the Tarek ult, he's just kind of left out to dry and die walls off the back of a massive Baron power play win a team fight, skyrocket their gold advantage up to about 8,000 right now. Yeah, they're well and truly in the driver's seat in this game. You'd expect with this gold lead, they'd look towards the next Baron perhaps as their big point to sure. win the game through. At this stage, having already broken the base though of Legacy, it'd be quite helpful putting them on the back foot for this. Very good stuff at the moment from Dials in game number one. Big turret advantage. When you're playing Vladimir, you don't necessarily need that blue buffer giving that one over to Raze. That's going to allow a lot more deadly flourish to come out. Get those snares. He's, doing, he's been doing a great job of hitting those snares all game long. Yeah, he definitely has. Now, Choose does have a Void Staff, so Legacy can potentially kill those bruises that were impossible to kill before. There's also the, I guess, Flat Armor Penetration build out of mm -hmm. King should be plenty. Got himself that more. So does Raze, so the mid lane is going to struggle a little bit more killing their respective carries. But Ray's should never even be in range of the Cassiopeia, essentially, especially now that he's got that Rapid Fire Cannon on top of that. It's going to be very difficult to deal with. Yeah, and once again, massively on the back foot here, Legacy. They need to pull something out now, and it does need to be that big team fight. They've got the makings of a team composition that wants the Direwolves to come to them and execute on that team fight. So you have a look, it's the Cassiopeia Lucian combo. They've got the Tarek to deny Vladimir going in. Also got the Gragas to disengage and the Nah that can work both ways. 
But that's really the pain point that they have right now. King might be in trouble, gets tagged by the first one, but once Kuden's there to body block, Ray does a smart thing. Cancels it early to ensure for the speedier cooldown here. Super minions hmm. are now breaching the walls of Legacy. And there's still no life steal to be seen from <coughs> King. So his itemization choices have actually gone towards the healing reduction on the Fantix. Sure. I don't blame him. There's no Ignite on their team. Kuden goes for the exhaust. So once again, he's building that out of necessity. No Morellos to be seen on the Cassiopeia. Something that you might have liked. And as a result, King has no life steal against a lot of teams that are... A lot of champions, sorry, that'll chip away at his health bar. His sustain's lacking. And as a result, if Legacy don't win the fight from the get-go with that Nar combo, they really do get out sustained. Baron is live, and Diwolves, they have the gold advantage, they have the item advantage, but really need to work on their turret coordination there. They want to siege. Again, they want to use yeah. Chippies in that bottom lane. And they also want to use the rest of their team on the top side because the inhibitor's broken. The Diwolves now just make a big play <coughs> towards that Baron. They've got all five members now about to be here. Teleports in from a Mega Nar also. Let's see if Legacy can do anything about this. Regret and Fantix manning the, front, manning the fort. Tempered Fate has been used. The Diwolves do get themselves off the Baron. Chibis has started it. They'll be clearing out the one ward that they have left. Remember, Super Minion is still in that mid lane. Yeah, so they kick this one off again. Of course, the minions are a deal that they need to contend with. Legacy now have to force their way into this fight. Sibyl's over the wall onto King. Yeah, that was King doing deep. some great damage. Shoots actually gets snared up here. Fantix has ghosted in, gets a nice four man ultimate. There's a Tarek one coming down. Diwolves, they need to back off for this to go down. Carbon, he's in the fight doing a lot of damage. Chippies, he's out. Fantix is quite low. Health bar's looking good for Legacy. But they're looking better for Diwolves. Once again, they push them back. The minions are still pushing in. Diwolves can rinse and repeat this. Next time, maybe they get a kill doing it. Because Legacy use a lot of stuff to have to stay alive. Once again, that Tempered Fate being down could have changed the outcome. But the Tarek is quite important in these situations. Not only does he have the Aegis, he has the ultimate. And the Vladimir just pops down his ulti and runs away. That's not actually going to be enough to kill anybody because mm. Kuden exists. Mm. Tarek ulti is quite a long cooldown. Not be up. Considerable amount, of, a considerable amount of time here. So Diwolves, they have that time frame to play around with here to maybe fade the Baron once again. Let's see, Regret. Tempered Fate's off. Human Plage nearly back up. Chippy still. And Tally. Both teleports kind of on the same duration here, but Chippy's is bot lane. Elder Dragon spawned as well. Chippy's actually bot lane with no teleport, yeah. so him being down there means that Legacy could have an avenue of attack here. He's even going teammate. towards, yeah, Titanic Hydra is his build of choice. Cool. But this gives Legacy such a big window to move. Yes, he gets extra wave clear from that Tiamat and can rotate soon enough. It's really curious because now Legacy are able to at least establish control of their own jungle and have a point where they can move from. A new base of operations is not their own base. Two of the major ejectors are up and available. Baron and the Elder Dragon here. Which one will they choose? Diwolves definitely want to favor that Baron, but kind of depends on where these top laners are because neither of them have the teleport. So once Kali shows himself, down on the bot, not going to happen. Fantix might be in trouble. Does get stunned up. Altered back into the fight. Forced to ult defensively on King. He's in pool, so the ultimate from Bard not going to hit users. The Hourglass keep himself safe. Now Sybil trying to do what he can. Tarek ulti coming down. He's going to land on quite a few members here, but Sybil, he might go down to the mini. Nah, there it is. Tally picks up that one. Now Chippy's in a world of hurt. Ray can't find a way in. Chippy's has to ult his way back to safety. There is the curtain call. Tally flashes in, gets the stun onto Fantix. Nars him back into the fight. Pulls once again. This is looking great for Legacy. Fantix, the tower oh. is still alive for Legacy. A great double stun coming Raze. out of regret. Reg Raze finds them. He's got four shots left, but on the back, Lucian does pick up the Vladimir. Raze. Here. The stun comes through. Raze, he's got no ammo. Stun cannot land. The snare not going to hit anyone. Couldn't. One more attack should do it. Chippy's now on top of him, and what a game. Diables and Legacy back and forth. Yeah, there's actually still the flash and heal standing for Ray. So if he wants to try and find something, he can. Has that crit available. The inhibitor is available for them also, but they can't push that deep into the base of Legacy. And now they limp away with barely a health bar remaining. The three members strong of Diwolves now look immediately towards this Baron. This is a risk, except that Rek'Sai is going to be that game-changing factor. Right now, they need Carbon probably to try and steal. 
but Zibble makes his way there in time with the Void Rush. King and Carbon are off to the wings. Where is Tally? No ultimate this. available. Baron dropping down to 2k health. When is Carbon going to go in for the steal? Doesn't get it. Zibble secures that one though. Tally and uh, King doing a great job. They take out the Bard. Snare not going to land from Raze. Diewolves, they need to retreat from this one. Can Tally keep them at bay? No. They get the Baron, they get out, and they only lose Bard. Yeah, exactly right. So Diewolves now secure themselves even further ahead, and potentially more so as the Baron buff stands. Really tough situation now for Legacy. They almost found themselves the ideal fight, but ideal is exactly what they need. In fact, they need perfection past this point. Looking at the kills, 14 to 10. Diewolves do have the advantage at that, but... The gold is really where it speaks. 9,000 in front are Diwolves right now. More closer to 8. Well, Legacy haven't broken a turret yeah, past the lane while. swap. Yeah. Like, they actually got the lane swap turrets and nothing beyond that. King's strong. 4-1-4. We've got the mid-game Lucian build. So, you can see just how much damage Raze is starting to do. Jin just getting stronger and stronger. Elder Dragon is on the field. So, all Chippies needs to do is stay bot and continue to push that one away. Yeah, and Raze is starting to go monstrous at the Ooh. moment. He really does need to be respected, if not killed immediately, for a fight to even be looked at as potentially successful for Legacy. There's a big job for Carbon, big job for Tally ahead of them. They want to take down this AD carry of the Diawals because his range is so long. He might be in trouble here, not going to get knocked up. Pops his way out of danger. Legacy forced to answer. To what Diawals are calling right now. Elf yeah. Dragon still might be the point of contention, but Legacy do have some nice wards, so we'll have vision on what Diablo's ploy is. And finally, the Seraph's Embrace will be seen for Choo Choo's also, so it has an extra shield to keep himself alive. This has been kicked off. The Baron buff's backing them. The vision control is mostly there, except that one ward that is spotting them. Legacy work in. Yep, Carbon, he's just going to get deleted, essentially. Very, very low turret, keeping him safe for now. Chippies is in on the fight, gets a stun onto Food and Tally. Round the back, choose. He's locked out Fantix. of the fight. He can't get over. Sybil doing a great job, Race. He's still waiting to reload. Regret only gets stunned up. Choose might be in trouble. He's so damn low. King trying to get himself to safety. The damage coming through the ulti. It does connect with Carbon. Almost connects with Choose. Forced to flash his way out of that one. Now, Tally does have the Guardian Angel available. Kuden, he's a support against a top laner. Not looking great for him. Tally's GA gets popped. Kuden goes down. Direwolves looking for the inhibitor and maybe more. And Raze is legendary right now. The difference between both of these teams is one AD carry has free reign to do damage. The other one is kiting for his life. There's now two people remaining from Legacy. It is the carries, but it means they don't have a tank to actually protect them. It's a really big pain point for Legacy now to try and deal with this onslaught towards their Nexus. Chippy's teleports his way back in. Sybil with the Void Rush. Direwolves looking to end game number one. The first Nexus Tower should fall. The second one getting lower and lower. Where are the Legacy members still? Five seconds for Carbon. Ten for Kuda. Choose. He's been caught. He's been taken down. King, he's forced back to the Nexus. The tower goes down. The inhibitor goes down. And Direwolves take game number one against Legacy. The step number one now secured by the Direwolves. They still need to 2-0 if they want to tie for first, but it's still in this series in the Legends title match. They've put themselves 1-0 up, and a very convincing way to do so through, honestly, the strength of a Vladimir, firstly, and Ray's went crazy. Look, an epic start to an epic series. We're going to throw it back to the desk to tell us what they thought of game number one. Thank you, Rogi and Rusty. My name is Michael Hingazing, and I'm joined here at the analyst desk by Frosco and Raz. Guys, let's start off with that game. Uh, let's start with the composition, Frosco. What, what, what did you think of uh, who, who won out in the draft? Uh, well, I'm actually going to start by echoing sentiments from uh, Rusty in particular, mm. the high performance that we got out of Ray's. He played phenomenally that game. Uh, but what was really interesting to me when you look at the draft is we talked about earlier in the evening when Cassiopeia is picked that it mm. offers just ultimate protection to your back line simply because the threat of her ultimate, If you, she's like an anti-dive champion. Mm. You try to dive back, she's just going to ult you, keeps her AD carry really safe. The beauty about Dire Wolf's composition is that with uh, Echo, Vladimir, and in particular Jen, because again, it, it was really all about Raze, is that you have so much backline dive or backline threat pressure yeah. uh, that Cassiopeia, she can't do anything. Like So much damage was being done by Raze's ultimate, and Cassiopeia does not matter in mm. that composition anymore for protecting King, who was also another high-standing, performing AD carry. Yeah, Raz, we'll talk about the game. Uh, mm -hmm. wh wh who do you think kind of just outplayed uh, their comp in that game? 
I mean, it just came down to like, it, what, as she said, that was more like team fight execution at that mm. point. Because honestly, um, I like Legacy's composition. Like theoretically, the comp should work where it's just kind of like it goes to their style. Cassiopeia is always going to be like playing reactively and it's great into the Vladimir matchup, right? So mm. she'll always be able to push out, always be able to have priority. Um, you can even look into the replay too, where pretty much, um, look, yeah, let's just put it up on the screen at this point. So at this point, just to set it up, honestly, um, one uh, day the replay will come up. It'll come. But yeah. <laughs> um, we got it. You can go ahead and start it, Benji. Yeah, it just came down to a lot of ex miss executions at this point. They blew out the... the Terra ultimate Art falls. Ultimate. Um, pretty much does nothing for the team. Then Tally's actually going to completely whiff his Gnar ultimate here, exactly. as well as the Cassiopeia ult being whiffed. So there's Tally's missed ultimate. And effectively, at this point, Direwolves know that uh, all of the key cooldowns are down for Legacy, so they can just start ramming their head face forward into this fight and clean up the rest of it. Exactly. And how you want to play the composition. Like, at this point, Direwolves can just do what they want. Vladimir's going to go into the back line. Sybil's, like, they have all like immunity like impunity of what they can do it to the back line at this point I will do. Um, but I do like Legacy's composition, but it really does come back to setup. Like a hundred percent. Um so if you have the NAR pick, if you have like the Tark, like you have great amount of pressure within your like like Casio, you can pressure your lanes out and then you can go back to objectives, right? Enemy team theoretically cannot fight you, or at least on your terms, right? Mm. And so the problem is, I've said it a lot of times, I don't like the NAR pick for Legacy, because Legacy is more of a split push team. They can pretty much get as much pressure off of Tally's pressure like in, in his side lane, right? But when it comes to NAR, you see it in Marin playing uh, the NAR pick. You manage your wave bar incredibly well. You look for the flank opportunities, and pretty much you look towards your team to get the proper setup first. Legacy, in my opinion, they don't get proper team fight setup. I don't see Kuden and Carbon looking toward like like uh, get the flank like flank wards, looking to get deep pressure together. It doesn't happen. They're more of a split pressure team, but and and they played it throughout the entire split. If you can play Nar with split pressure, like you, if you want to go for your of the the items to just to pretty much bully the matchup and to take towers, you can do that. But if you want to pick the NAR for the team fights, then you have to be able to play accordingly. Mm -hmm. It pretty much comes down to uh, something that Spawn likes to say about Legacy, and we had this conversation before with him, is that uh, Legacy, they set up objectives uh, for the fight. They don't set up the fight for the objective. Mm -hmm. So, And this is kind of the big difference also between the Chiefs. Like The Chiefs, their primary goal is they want the objective around it, so they're going to take mm. it or they're going to take the fight, where Legacy, they just want to fight you. Mm. Well, the Die Wolves are up now 1-0 in this series over Legacy, and we'll be back with Game 2 right after this.